cookie clicker starts like bake one cookie, then goes bake 10 quintillion cookies without clicking in 17 seconds. Start the apocalypse. Kill a reindeer. It's too cute. I can't do it. I'm at the end stages of the game. 91% of achievements complete. I'm close to the final boss, but to understand what I have to do next, I have to explain what I've been through so far. So let me take you on a journey through the most exciting, strange, heartbreaking, and expensive video game story you've ever heard. I started by clicking the big cookie and baking one cookie, getting my first achievement. The game gave me a mission, bake one million cookies. So I kept clicking and realized with 15 cookies I can buy an AI cursor that clicks the cookie automatically once every 10 seconds. So I can stop now. But I want a million so I clicked faster than accepting terms and conditions I haven't read until I unlocked the second building. A nice grandma to bake cookies for you. I knew I could trust her. Then she said, we will rise. And I knew I couldn't trust her. So I put her on my board of enemies. Then I had more buildings to buy, a farm to grow cookie plants, a mine to hide the cookies underground so they aren't taxed, 20 more curses to make my ears bleed. But I kept getting more achievements. 83 cookies per second. This is where I start needing upgrades. I can buy tools for my buildings to make them more efficient, like fertilizer for farms, drills for the mine, and for the factory, child labor. It's strange that everything is bought with cookies. It's also strange that grandmas are talking about world domination. That's probably fine. At this rate, it'll take 166 hours to get 1 million cookies. I need a new strategy, but just as I was considering double child labor, a new cookie appeared in front of my eyes. A cookie made of gold. Instinctively, I clicked it. Frenzy, cookie production times seven for one minute. Seven times more cookies came rolling in. I was baking more cookies than cookies I've accepted without knowing what that means. And I reached one million cookies. Then immediately, the game revealed a portal. But to open it, I need to feed the portal one trillion cookies. To get that many, I need more obscure methods of baking cookies. Go dog! Bake me the cookies! No, that didn't work. So to make me click even faster, I contacted Trey, a man whose family was murdered by a low-quality desk mat. He got me in contact with a group of real-life artists. We spent weeks designing a custom Dragoon desk mat featuring Grandma Vera, Morgan Ellis, and many more characters all attacking me. After a week of using this, I can tell I'm clicking faster. The tasteful thickness of it. The quality of the print is amazing. And I've decided to sell these desk mats to those of you who are early enough to this video. For only a month after this video is uploaded, you can buy this desk mat from Epic Desk and have me stare into your soul as you play. It'll never be sold again, or else Vera would gain too much power. Buy this detailed, high-quality desk mat from my link right now. But then I discovered something unexpected. One of my upgrades was a kitten. Meow, may I help you? I should have stopped playing right here, but I have to know what's in the mysterious portal. And the kitten offered to increase my cookies per second in return for milk, but I don't have any milk. Oh, when did that get there? Turns out each time I get an achievement, milk accumulates beneath the cookie. And the more milk I have, the more work kittens will do for me. More achievements, more cookies. The good news is there are 622 achievements, so I can get a lot of extra cookies. The bad news is there are 622 achievements, and I now have to get 622 achievements. So the next achievement I got was to give my bakery a name. I named it after my first grandma, Vera, and my fourth grandma, and my seventh. Why are so many of them called Vera? Who on earth is Vera? Well, according to Google Maps, Vera owns a wellness clinic in Queensland, Australia. So I sent her a heartfelt email telling her to fuck off and let me bake cookies in peace. We'll see if she responds. With the kittens managing my farmers and miners, I had enough cookies to buy the next few buildings. First, I built a factory to mass produce cookies, but I got sued for paying my workers in cookies. So I bought the bank and changed the local currency to cookies. Then claimed my cookie business was actually a religion so I don't have to pay taxes. But it actually isn't a religion. It's a cult. And by watching this video, you are part of it. Welcome. Please accept these terms and conditions. At the top of the screen is a news ticker. It tells me the important things happening in the world, like your cookies have achieved sentience. Cookie wizards spotted on Mars. We will kill you, Dragoon. Wait, what did that say? I am going to Mars. So I built a rocket ship and met a race of wizards that had magic that could heal sickness, fly endlessly, and speak with animals. So I used their magic to bake more cookies. I bought more ships to colonize other planets that I filled with bakeries, farms, and more wizard towers so I could reach my goal of one trillion cookies. And then the portal opened. It had a severe warning that I treated like terms and conditions and didn't read it. And then the cookie broke. There were glimpses of Vera, of other people, locked in an endless
endless fight. And then I reached the Ascended Plane. This is a place that's in between the universe I started in and the new universe I'm traveling to through the portal. Here I can buy upgrades with Ascension Points. The more cookies I got in the last universe, the more points I have to spend. There's a strange upgrade that I need one sextillion cookies to get. So for now, I bought something simpler, a dragon egg, and went on to the next universe. I am back to zero cookies, so I started clicking, buying curses, and researching contract laws so I can get more child labor. But now I can feed my dragon egg cookies. Millions of cookies. It hatched and gives me an aura that increases kitten productivity by 5%. 5% might not seem like much, but soon you'll see me spending days of my life on 1% bonuses. Wait, that's a spoiler. I'll remove that part of the video, but then this video is in. I'm not qualified to edit this. Go dog, fix my video. Whose dog is this? As I bought more buildings, I realized some of my grandmas started changing. Farmer grandmas, minor grandmas. They're taking jobs in my factories. Did they even give me a resume? Can they even read? Those glasses are not in front of their eyes. She can barely see. Then a mysterious upgrade appeared in the shop, the bingo center. The grandmas are planning something big. To defeat them, I'll need a strong weapon. Luckily, I have a fire-breathing dragon, so I fed him 100 grandmas. That should hold them off for a while, but he grew increasingly hungry. So I jammed a hundred farms down his throat, and he unlocked a new aura, Reaper of Fields. This meant that the next golden cookie gave me a new buff, Dragon Harvest, giving 15 times cookie production. The dragon flew across the earth, reaping the souls of the wicked. The wicked being those who have murdered someone, cheated on a math test, or aren't subscribed to Dragoon. But baking cookies on every planet in the universe is not enough to meet my dietary requirements. I need to eat more. So I got my kittens to invent time travel, then I placed a dough at the beginning of time so that the Big Bang instantly cooked them. Then I used all the antimatter and light in the universe to make more cookies. We can't see the cookies anymore, but we can taste them. I finally have one quadrillion cookies. Then the grandma stole them all, bought the bingo center, and started conducting research with it. I could have stopped now, left them alone. I didn't have to fight the grandmas, but I'm Australian. We love a good fight. We picked a fight against an army of emus and lost. So I'm picking a fight with the grandmas and Morgan and a dog with a cannon, and Genevieve Lady. But that's a spoiler, I'll edit it out. Oh wait, the grandmas have already finished their research. Their weapon of mass destruction is chocolate chips. Oh, maybe they just like cookies and everything is fine. Yeah, the next invention was designer cocoa beans. I think it's gonna be okay. Their next upgrade was one mind. We are one, we are many. Either they wanna be friends, or they're an alien hive mind, a pooled collection of consciousness hell bent on ending my cookie clicking forever. It's probably the first first one. It's probably the second one. The background changed to disturbing imagery, and a demonic creature flew towards my cookie and began eating it. I killed the creature with my clicks, giving me an achievement that told me it's called a wrinkler. Vera is taking over my cookie, and she never responded to my email. She must be too old to use email. I'll have to deliver this letter the old-fashioned way. But this time, instead of threatening her, I'll be the bigger man and ask for peace. I wrote down a detailed peace treaty. I signed the treaty and placed it in an envelope addressed to Vera. We'll see if she responds. But in the meantime, I need a faster way of baking cookies. And that's when, after 24 hours of playing Cookie Clicker, a sugar lump that had been growing in the corner of the screen was ready to be harvested. Sugar lumps are like really tasty candy. Wait, this video has no sponsor. I can say what I like. Sugar lumps are like crack cocaine that also gives you the ability to fly. I offered this sugar lump to the wizards and they gave me personal access to their spell book. Now I can cast my own spells that give me more cookies, make upgrades cheaper, summon a wrinkler, but most most importantly, summon a random golden cookie. I will refer to this spell as Fatoff because that's what it's called. Now, I waited for a naturally spawning golden cookie to give me Dragon Harvest, then used Fatoff for a second golden cookie, which gave me the Frenzy buff. So I have a 15 times cookie production from Dragon Harvest and seven times from Frenzy, stacking together for a 105 times combo. But after that, I have to wait 40 minutes for my wizard mana to regenerate. So I decided to ascend again. I have over a thousand ascension points, allowing me to buy more types of cookies. Before I was just making chocolate chip cookies, but after the 87 billionth cookie, you get a bit bored. So I started baking white chocolate cookies, macarons, lady fingers, which is a strange name for a biscuit. Whose lady's fingers are we eating? If you're a lady and your fingers look like this, comment below. And if you're not a lady with these fingers, comment, yes Dragoon, I will buy your desk mat. But that's a spoiler, so I'll, I'll delete that. Each new type of cookie gives a small bonus in CPS. All bonus 
Chris's stack. So all these small percentages are currently giving me 7,000% more cookies per second, making the grandmas grow even angrier, sending more wrinklers at my cookie. But I got another golden cook. Wait, that cookie is red. The grandmas have taken over the golden cookies? All hope is lost. I'll be lucky to make it out of this alive. But turns out you can buy luck and use that luck to create more cookies. Then use a mathematics machine to create even more cookies. I'll assume you all cheated on your maths test, so let me explain how maths can double your cookies. Let's say you have a cookie, C, and a math cookie, M. They are the same thing. Then this machine multiplies both of them by C, leaving you with this. If you subtract M squared from both sides, then divide both sides by C minus M, you're left with C minus M equals M, or C equals 2M. We have turned one cookie into two math cookies, and therefore buying these math machines doubles our cookies per second. If you didn't understand that, join my school where I teach basic math and how to get 100,000 subscribers. Point is, I got one sextillion cookies. It's time to leave this universe and ascend, finally unlocking the hidden upgrade, the Season Switcher. Cookie Clicker has special events for holidays, Easter, Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, and April Fool's Day. But I was playing in May, where there are no events. Nothing happens in May. If you have a birthday in May, you don't really exist. You should really wake up from your coma. Your kids are waiting for you. Anyway, with this upgrade, I now have the power to change the time of year year inside the game. For a hundred trillion cookies, I can manifest Christmas into existence. The background becomes snowflakes, and the wrinklers start wearing Santa hats. Most importantly, you unlock a festive test tube, and as you put cookies into it, you get to see in horrifyingly real time the lifespan of Santa Claus. There isn't actually one single Santa Claus. Santa Claus comes from a race of elves, but as they grow older, they're sent into gladiatorial combat, slowly being killed one by one, and the final survivor is chosen as that that generation's Santa Claus. Then all the Santa Clauses from the different universes meet for a final battle in chess. The winner becomes the true final clause, who sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake. He knows you haven't drunk enough water today. So I put him on my board of enemies. Also, I get a ton of Christmas upgrades that boost my cookies per second. And this is where the reindeers come into the game. Christmas reindeers frolic across your screen with a cheerful smile, but you know in your heart that they are made out of cookies and popping them will give Give you cookies, giving you an achievement. Oh dear, pop one reindeer. Then you realize that this implies there is a reward for popping more than one. I went on a cookie fueled rampage with epic Christmas music in the background, and eventually, I popped 50 reindeer for the achievement, giving me slightly more milk and slightly more kitten cookies. Then I moved on to the other seasons. Valentine's Day gives you seven heart shaped cookies to buy. April Fools renames all of your buildings. The wizard towers become memes, the grandma's ovens, and the mines are secret recipes. The secret ingredient is child labor. Halloween has seven spooky candies you get from killing the wrinklers. And Easter gets you to go on an egg hunt. Any golden cookie or wrinkler can drop an egg that gives buffs ranging from 1% CPS to more golden cookies to 9 CPS. Yes, 9. There are 20 eggs in total, and every time you get one, it gets rarer and rarer. I was stuck on 19 out of 20 for over 200 wrinklers straight. It was maddening. But after I had all the buffs from all the seasons, I had a multiplier of 6 600,000 percent. I've also gotten more kitten workers. They went from just helping me to working for me to becoming my engineers and overseeing the whole operation. It's become even more worth it to get achievements. So I started getting all the strange ones. Shrink the game window to dunk the cookie in milk. Click this achievement to get it. Click the new sticker 50 times and ignore the reports of world hunger. Sell a grandma. This gave me enough cookies to buy the next building, the JavaScript console. Cookie Clicker is written in Java. This building allows you to rewrite the code of the game itself to bake more cookies, which is where we need to talk about cheating. There are three ways to play Cookie Clicker. Vanilla, Scumbag, and Ballin'. Vanilla is all in the game, the true experience where you don't do anything else I'm about to say. Ballin' is where you press F12, open up the game console, and write game.cookies equals a fuckton, and you instantly get infinity cookies and win the game. Or just press ruin the fun and unlock everything that'll be in this entire video. Well, most things. And the in-between category is for scumbags. Save scumming is a method of saving the game, then testing an RNG outcome. If you didn't like it, reload your game and do it again until you get what you wanted. 
I believe this is a crime worse than murder, but not as bad as not being subscribed. I've been playing vanilla. The JavaScript console didn't help me much, and the grandmas were getting angrier, or are they just melting? You could say that constantly leaving the universe is running away from your problems, but there's problems in the new universe as well. It doesn't really matter which way I run, it's all problems. Also, every time I ascend, I lose all my seasonal upgrades. I have to watch Santa grow up again. I have to get all those eggs again if I want my precious plus nine CPS. I've been playing for four 48 hours now. No, not straight. I slept for over an hour. But I have my second sugar lump. I offered it to my farmers and they let me personalize a small garden. I have a wheat seed that gives me 1% bonus CPS. And when I let two of them grow, a corn plant had mutated from the wheat. Then I planted two corn next to each other and they grew into a guild millet. I had three out of the 34 seeds in the game. Legends speak of a plant that is capable of destroying the grandmas. And by legends, I mean people in the cookie clicker discord server. They don't like me very much. They claim I don't play cookie clicker properly but I see nothing wrong with this setup. Click faster, dog! Over the next few weeks, I would grind cookies into the septillions, even octillions. And day by day, I gave more sugar lumps to the farmers until I had a fully expanded garden to grow more plants. I kept mutating them to get new varieties. Using the simple technique of following this insane flowchart, special mentions include the golden clover, which has a one in 1400 chance of growing, ever daisies, which when you do get them, take 12 real life hours to grow, and the juice see queen beat. After a week of gardening, I had 33 out of 34 seeds. Three weeks later, I still had 33 out of 34 seeds. When I eventually finally got the juicy queen beat, I was told that I now had to delete all of my garden progress for an achievement. Clicking this button was the single most painful gaming experience I've ever had. And so it goes on my enemy board. And those sources that told me there was a plant to defeat the grandmas, they actually meant that to defeat the grandmas, I have to get every achievement in in the game. The grandma's true weakness is actually their allergy to cats. And if I get more milk, enough kittens will rise up to defeat the grandmothers. So all of this was necessary. Although I had an idea. Jumping universes doesn't stop the grandmas, they just follow me. But even though I'm already baking cookies in multiple universes in all timelines, I haven't explored other dimensions. The next building is an idle verse. Think of the starting universe here, and each ascension I'm hopping into a new universe. Dimensions are sets of universes is parallel to the current universe path. I need to distract the grandmas while I leave this dimension. So I started a rap battle with them and left as they were thinking of a rhyme. I've made it to safety, but I'm a lot poorer in this dimension. I need a way to make cash fast with no risk of losing it. So I'm ready to gamble my life savings in the stock market. Throughout all the universes I now own, a few rival companies have come up trying to sell products that aren't cookies. It's my job to remind them that I am too big to fail and too big to let anyone else succeed and too big to only eat one octillion cookies for breakfast. There's hundreds of pages of technical analysis to optimize your cookie trading strategy. But mainly I bought low and sold high for 40 days straight until I got the hardest stock achievement, gaseous assets, for making $31 million. You'll notice this achievement has a purple tag, shadow achievement. Do you remember when I said this game has 622 achievements? There are. There's just also 17 secret shadow achievements that should not be attempted according to the creator of Cookie Clicker, Ortail. One of them is True Never Click, where you have to restart the entire game and get to 1 million cookies without clicking. It involves waiting for golden cookies, hoping you get the plus 13 lucky buff twice, then getting the million 0.1 cookies at a time. And if you're a masochist, you can combine this with another achievement, Hardcore, and do it without buying a single upgrade. Grade. Only a mentally unstable man would attempt to get the shadow achievements. So after I got them, I was officially 100 days into my playthrough. I thought I should celebrate and get Cookie Clicker out of my mind for a while. So I baked some cookies. I looked through the list of types of cookies to make. I thought about my enemies. I thought about my dedication to making spoiler-free content. I thought about my limited edition, high-quality, artistic genius desk map. But I got distracted looking at Vera and accidentally made ladyfingers. I'm going to carry these around with me and keep searching for ladies that have fingers that look like this. But first I have to deal with a big issue. I only have 10 nonillion cookies. It may seem like a lot, could even last you a full weekend, but the achievements for cookies go far onward and I need them all. So I bought the next building, a Cortex Baker. It turns out each line of universes is created by an ancient entity called a Cortex Baker, basically a god, but even gods can't resist the alluring bite of a chocolate chip cookie. I started paying them in cookies to change the laws of physics so that the ingredients 
ingredients for a chocolate chip cookie were now halved, doubling my cookies per second. But to get even more cookies, I've kept leveling my pet dragon this entire time, and he's unlocked a new buff. Instead of Dragon Harvest, which gives times 15 cookies, I have Dragon Flight, which gives 1,111 times cookies. Now that I have over 400 wizard towers, I have enough mana to cast for Toph twice in a row. So, my basic strategy is to wait until the natural golden cookie gives me Dragon Flight, then cast for Toph twice, and pray to the Cortex Bakers the RNG gives me Frenzy and Clicker Frenzy, giving me 43 million percent more cookies for 10 seconds. But actually, there's a way to increase that by another thousand percent. I gave a sugar lump to my priests in the temple, and they let me choose which religion to follow. I was always a fan of the Mayans. They would sacrifice a person to the sun every day to make sure the sun would rise the next morning. We still haven't proven that that doesn't work. I think we should keep doing it just in case. So I chose a religion that makes you sacrifice your buildings to it for more cookie buffs. I am now almost halfway through the game. I just have to- Oh god damn it, the grandmas are back! I kept going through more universes and more dimensions and getting more ascended upgrades until I discovered a new path. Unshackled curses, unshackled grandmas, unshackled farms. As it turns out, all of my buildings were still being shackled by their own inner thoughts and limiting beliefs, ruled by their ego. So I gave them therapy. It worked, but slowly. So instead I gave them magic mushrooms, drove them to ego death, and now they operate with pure efficiency, no friction of thought whatsoever, finally unlocking the final building, me. I have ascended to the point where I can buy other versions of myself. They have their own extended universes and dimensions of cookies. Together, we can bake even more cookies, but we each have a horde of grandmas chasing after us, so we have to act quickly. I am ready for the final sprint to the maximum amount of cookies in the game, one Trevor Gentilian. The combo requires some setup. Firstly, in the garden I can plant golden clovers, which increase the spawn rate of golden cookies, making it easier to stack combos. There is a lot of RNG, but eventually I can get Frenzy, Dragon Harvest, and a building special, which is a buff that gives you a multiplier based on how many buildings you own. I add all three at the same time. Then I change my Dragon Aura to Dragon Flight, and while I wait for the next natural cookie, cast for Toph twice, then I can refill my mana with a sugar lump and cast for Toph two more times, so I have three active buffs and five golden cookies on the screen, hoping that they give me Dragon Flight and Clicker Frenzy. Then if I get the insane RNG to do all of that, I go into three different forms of debt, freeze my garden, activate ascension buffs, sacrifice thousands of buildings to the sun god, then change religions to the cow god, then click as fast as my hands will allow me. Do all of that in under 5 seconds so the buffs don't run out, and you will get millions of years worth of cookies. It took me days to finally get the right RNG and not mess up the execution, and it left me 500 Unvigintillion cookies. I have to do that at least 4 more times to get to one Trevor Gentilian. It'll take me many weeks of grinding, getting close to the combo but falling short, misclicking, I, at this point, I just don't want to keep going. It'll take too long, but just after I said I would stop playing Cookie Clicker, my mentor, Dratoon, spoke to me. This is you. Around you is what you are currently capable of. Further outwards is the darkness of the world, your fears, but also your hopes and dreams. In every direction you face problems, but the only way to grow, to realize those hopes, to realize those dreams, is to go through the darkness. Face the fear with speed and vigor. Have faith that you will overcome them. He's right. I've always done that. I faced things I was scared of. The Bloons leaderboard and Morgan. Vera and her army of grandmas. One day I'll steal the Pope's hat. I will keep fighting. Wait, the Discord is yelling at me again. I said I was about to finish the game with one Trevor Gentilian cookies. They said I was a fool. There are still achievements I haven't gotten. Cast 999 spells. I can cast the cheap spells over and over, that's not too bad. Level 10 grandmas? Okay, that cost me 55 sugar lumps, but I can do it. Wait, level 10 temples, level 10 spaceships, level 10 alternate dimensions. There's an achievement for level 10 of every single building, costing a total of 1100 sugar lumps. At minimum, that'll take over two years Years to get that many lumps. Wait, there's one more achievement. Black Cat's Paw. Click 7,777 golden cookies. I've been playing this game for over 600 hours over six months, and I've clicked just over 2,000 golden cookies. How on earth am I supposed to get that? Especially since there is a shadow achievement, Seven Horseshoes. Click 27,777 golden cookies. And this is a Steam achievement. It counts. The Discord had 
had exposed me to deeper knowledge than the human mind was ever supposed to witness, and they had just begun. It turns out there's a competitive leaderboard for Cookie Clicker. I had no idea. I was just playing for, well, I was gonna say fun, but I'm, I'm not sure. Most of the leaderboards include some scumbagging. The non-cheater leaderboard of the world is here. And if I were on the leaderboard, I would be 21st in the world for most cookies baked without cheating. That's way fucking better than I expected. Okay, maybe I have done pretty well, but what's keeping me from getting top 10? It's always been Vera, taking my cookies, distracting me. I would be number one if not for her. Side note, please no one try to contact anyone named Vera in real life. This is all for a silly cookie clicker video and should not be taken into the real world. So I booked a flight to Queensland, Australia to meet Vera in person. On the flight, I planned my method of attack. She's weak to kittens and rap battles. I was designing the perfect weapon. Eventually I arrived, and I was about to scream at Vera to come out and face me. But then I saw something in front of her house. Is that an envelope? My peace treaty. Signed by Vera. And so I have no broken free. But I've got one last thing to say Vera, you fought well One more thing before I go away Seems like the end of my mission But you can barely see And so I know you didn't read The terms and conditions Give me cookies, two by my desk mat, three tell a friend about Dragoon's desk mat, four a description, five and you'll see that, six you've agreed to buy my desk mat. Now there is gone, there's no one left who can defeat me. To represent the constant battle we all face, I've created this desk mat. For a limited time, you can be the proud owner of this amazing artwork of the battles we've faced. Drag your mouse and keyboard over the high quality fibers while I stare into your soul. Just remember to read the terms and conditions. I ended up leaving Vera the ladyfingers. I assume if anyone's fingers look like that, it's hers. But not before I sacrificed one to the sun god so that it rises tomorrow. You're welcome. I'll see you all in two years when the sugar lumps are done growing.